What defines our idea of the desert? Isolation or freedom? A place outside of time or at the end of it? Silence and absence or... <laughs> that incredibly short animated film is Canyon by Hugo Marino. And despite only coming in at 35 seconds in total, I think it perfectly captures the desert as it has emerged in our popular consciousness. That if it's defined by anything, it's the capacity for contradiction, for ambiguity. Silence and absence oppose chaos and destruction. Modern cultivated space opposes vast barren landscapes, a place that can be seen at once to be ruined by human intervention, but equally suggests the ruin of the human. The desert, or at least our idea of it, is a site in constant turmoil and with an infinite capacity for change. And this is what makes it the perfect setting for Michelangelo Antonioni's 1970 film, Zabriskie Point, a film that is both narratively and contextually surrounded by conflict. The story follows the struggle between the capitalist establishment and the youthful counterculture movement in America that preceded and accompanied its release, and it was overwhelmingly criticised for its lack of coherence, bad acting and for being burdened down with ideological luggage it clearly doesn't understand. But despite a somewhat reductionist approach to its subject matter, and many interpretations focusing on the political message advocated in siding with the counterculture movement, I don't think Antonioni was necessarily concerned with the political implications of the narrative. In a New York Times interview with film critic Guy Flatley, Antonioni explains how he feels America is the most interesting country in the world at the moment, because of what's going on here. The contradictions, many of which exist everywhere, but which are already crashing against each other here. That's what I tried to show in Zabriskie Point. So from this perspective, it's not so much an ideology that underpins the film, but the very idea of contradiction itself, a narrative that would reflect the volatile landscape that surrounds it. And it's in this way that, while supported by the familiar filmic narrative, I think there's almost an entirely different film, separate from character, action or dialogue, that plays out visually turning what would seem to be a straightforward narrative structure into something far more experimental. Antonioni was always concerned with the visual, and if his work could ever be defined by just one overriding characteristic, it would probably be the conflation of character and landscape, a uniquely architectural vision that can be seen throughout his filmography. The dwarfed figures in La Ventura, continuing in his first colour film Il Deserto Rosso, for which the landscapes were even artificially coloured to better reflect the protagonist's view. In each film, every object and figure was deliberately positioned. And this too is true of Zabriskie Point, with its visual comparison between the desert landscapes and the human body. The figures seem to dissolve and merge with the valleys and crevices of the desert, which themselves increasingly resemble a reclining human form. But here I think this obsession with the image, with appearances, runs even deeper. The persistent use of advertising images as a shorthand for the products and ideals they represent. Billboards that dominate the film image as they dominate the landscape. The surreal luxury development commercial, filmed with mannequins as if to further blur and distort the image as reality. Even the lead actors themselves were chosen simply for their appearance. Having no previous acting experience, they were reportedly scouted and cast simply for their countercultural demeanour. Which is probably what led to the acting being, you know, not great. But it perhaps makes the Brisky Point Antonioni's most purely visual achievement, fully emphasising the importance of the visual over anything else. Although this isn't intended to entirely dismiss the film's subject. I think his whole impulse is a poetic impulse rather than a, a political one, you know, but it got all mixed up with the, with the politics of the time, which were in chaos anyway. You know, there were all of these conflicting ideologies, you know, banging up against each other. And I think, what, what do you pick from all of these ideologies? You know, how do you make a synthesis or how do you make sense out of all of these conflicting structures? The visual obsession of the film explores this in both depicting this conflict within the image, in the contrast of cultivated and uncultivated space, but also presents the image itself as an attempt to make sense of it. Urban development is not only in conflict with the natural landscape of the desert, because the desert is already, as previously suggested, a space of conflict, and of change, as its surface is under a constant process of transformation, ephemeral and yet eternal. This is an area of ancient lake beds deposited five to ten million years ago. 
These beds have been tilted and pushed upward by earth forces and eroded by wind and water. This urban illusion then becomes a way to suppress contradiction, or to try and make sense of it. A domestic scene superimposed over a landscape that is infinitely unknowable. The tradition of desert philosophy routinely unifies the desert landscape and ideas of the human. From Deleuze's meditation on the desert islands, suggesting that the elan that draws humans toward islands extends the double movement that produces islands in themselves, to John Baudrillard, who, in his book America, uses the same language of the human and isolation to describe the American desert as a natural extension of the inner silence of the body. And so, I think Antonioni's visual merging of landscape and body is underpinned by this theoretical framework that the human self is mirrored in this mutable, shifting landscape, suggesting that these characteristics are equally applicable to the self, to the human. As argued by Sam Rohde in his book on the director, simply titled Antonioni, Antonioni's films seem to demonstrate a reluctance to know, which is founded on a perception about the instability, the tenuousness of knowing, the fragility of knowledge. This approach to the idea of knowing is one of intrinsic uncertainty, the idea of knowledge as solid may be comforting and simple, just as the luxury development appears comforting and simple against its desert background, but both are equally depicted as fake. What is left is the implication that there is no one true understanding, no singular perspective that can make sense of these conflicting structures. As Rodi again proposes, Antonioni's films pose a subject only to compromise it, constitute objects only to dissolve them, propose stories only to lose them, but equally they turn those compromises and losses back towards another solidity, a wandering away from narrative to the surface into which it was dissolved, but in such a way that the surface takes on a fascination, becomes a subject of its own. There's an emphasis on shape and colour in the film, the graphic shapes of commercial illustration, objects that move in and out of focus, the abstract forms of the desert or the bright patterns of the commercial. Regarding this, writer and film critic Fiona Villella states that, for Antonioni, it's all about tracing the line, the curve and the tone, and the process of refiguration. A state beyond faces, characters and emotions to the power and mystery of the world of objects and change. Antonioni reduces objects to their formal visual makeup first through composition and then pushing this to its visual and material extreme in the film's explosive finale. And if we're talking here about a dissolution of an object's identity in favour of its purely visual qualities through the process of explosion, then I think there's an interesting parallel in the double meaning of the term to blow up. First, of course, to explode, but also to enlarge. And it's the second meaning that Antonioni actually took as the title for his previous film in 1964, in which the photograph in question, via this process, is reduced to an indiscernible mass of black and white. If something is magnified, you'd expect to gain more information, see things in greater detail and gain a better understanding, but instead it fractures into abstraction, as if the possibility of grasping any true meaning will always be out of reach as the final explosion repeats itself over and over, followed by the slow motion incineration of its fractured interior, we are given an excess of visual information, but instead of revealing a cohesive conclusion, the film's narrative structure, its space and time, breaks down and blows apart, along with its parade of consumer objects. Zabriskie Point, like any Antonioni film, resists the idea of a true meaning, but I think more than any other of the films, this rejection of knowing, of totality, and subsequently an embracing of contradiction, is the very foundation of the film. A foundation that is served by the narrative, rather than the narrative being at the centre. C'est justement ça, c'est-à-dire ayant renoncé à, au sens unique et totalitaire, le sens bouge. C'est parce que le sens bouge que nous sommes vivants. Et il bouge grâce à ces contradictions qu'il y a à l'intérieur de chaque personne et entre les personnes et entre moi et le monde. Our world, our identity, is constantly in conflict. The concrete objects we associate with the rigidity of modern life are just as tenuous and changeable as the desert, suspended between acceleration in their obliteration and deceleration on film. 
blowing apart the very idea of singularity and embracing a new visual understanding, where the image is no longer confined to this illusion of unchanging stability, but instead may transcend the state in being reduced to pure abstraction. And so, in the absence of a single totalitarian meaning, we are simply left with the changeable image, an image reduced to shape and colour. Hey everyone, thank you for watching and an extra big thank you for everyone who has helped this channel reach a thousand subscribers. Actually a few hundred more than that now. Um, it's been a while since I uploaded the video, I skipped a month. Uh, this essay actually started out being about the desert, but then that didn't work out. Maybe one day I'll do that, but I became more and more fascinated with Zabriskie Point, which despite general opinion is actually a film I really like. So I had to rewrite the whole thing, restructure everything, and that is why I am late with this video. But as always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope I'll see you next time.